What is there to say about Randy Feltface? He definitely has the face of someone who has a fist up his ass. <laughs> I mean, eyes wide open. It's the bulging eye. Yes. He, he, and also the veins throbbing from his neck. <laughs> he was just like, that's just the felt, that's just like the felt material, like, like, you know, ridging up. It's like, I know, I'm just, I'm trying to be funny, damn it. You know, something Randy is, but I am not. It's hard to be as funny as Randy felt face. He's pretty funny. Yes. Ran seen. Randy is hilarious. And Randy, a while ago, uh, blew up the internet with his story of, uh, is like, and I present to you the life and times of Ernest Miller Hemingway in about, uh, what was it, five or six minutes? I, I don't think I saw that one. That one, that one's awesome. The very uh, first thing I ever saw from him was Braden doesn't eat blue. He, oh, yeah, yeah. Braden doesn't eat blue. What does that mean? <laughs> it's, like, it's like, first what do you off. Mean he doesn't eat it's blue. Like, first off, there are no naturally recurring blue foods. <laughs> Name a blue food right now. Blueberries. Blueberries are fucking purple! <laughs> yeah. And he's just like, it's like, the only thing that's really blue is mint. But the mint plant is actually green. And if you saw a mint plant that was actually blue, you would set that shit on fire. <laughs> and, yeah. <clears throat> Randy is hilarious. And he's done The Life and Times of Ernest Miller Hemingway, Braden Can't Eat Blue, and also Randy Buys a Bookshelf off of Gumtree. Now, I know what Gumtree is. I have friends who are... Uh, who are residents of a certain country down under and they tell me about Gumtree all the time. Gumtree is basically sort of like a sort of like a, a a trading hub. You basically go to this place and you can either trade stuff so that you got or you can just give people money. So basically it's like the Facebook marketplace it's except like Craigslist type thing. Yeah, sort of except, you know, not not as many murderers. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, actually, I heard a joke, and I can't believe I haven't made this joke. Uh, it's just like, it's like, Craigslist. Isn't this just where Mini Lad, like, like, solicited all of his, like, dirty, like, all of his dirty stuff? Because Mini Lad is Craig. Mm. Craigslist. It's like, no wonder I don't trust Craigslist. Even more reason to stay off that website. Exactly! So, Gumtree is basically, you know, it's uh, sort of like an eBay, Facebook marketplace, uh, where you can go and trade stuffs and everything. And uh, apparently, Randy was looking for a bookshelf, and he found one, and he bought it off of Gumtree. And I guarantee you there's a lot more to the story than that, because this video is literally 21 minutes long. Yeah. Fuck. All right, let's go. All right, <clears throat> here we go. Okay, fuck. Okay, here we go. Okay. Walk into <clears throat> Sky. Chapter one. I bought a bookshelf on Gumtree recently. Um, it, it was an amazing experience. I'll quickly tell you about it and then I'll read the book. But I found it strange because it, it made me start to think about the way, like, our methods of communication have sort of changed over the years. You know, in the old days, if you wanted a bookshelf, you'd just go see Gareth the bookshelf guy because <laughs> he was the dude in your tribe the carpenter. that made the bookshelves. Yeah. He had a little bookshelf cave. He was reputable. Now, any <laughs> mad bastard can sell their shit on Gumtree. You know what I mean? As a species, we're sort of able to cope with knowing and, and gossiping about around like 100 or 150 people. That's like the limit of our tribe. And yeah. more than that, it starts to get confusing, which is why we created abstract constructs like territories and deities to unite larger groups of people under an imaginary common factor. And it works a trick because we only really gather en masse on special occasions. But I think like social media and it's fucking all that up, you know? I don't think we're, we're able to deal with the thousands of people we're connected to on a daily basis and as a result we neglect our immediate 150, you know? Yeah. I'm always interested to know exactly how he's controlled. My guess is, well... Because, like, the movements are so, like, on point to, like, how you well, would move your hands if you, you're actually you see, expressing and talking. The hands are in, a com are in a common thing because, you know, they don't really, like, have any, like, like 
movements or actuations that allows yeah, him to like just, just the, the instead he does this he's the, like because uh, this is how like sticks. this is how some speakers like talk they use their full hand like this that like palm talk they basically just like hello welcome to my place i hope that you enjoy it and you see whenever you do it whenever you do it a lot as a human you notice it but where you know you're suspending disbelief because it's a puppet you know, he can get away with it without, like, doing any pointing or any, like, fist gestures or anything like that. But in terms of it, the head and the mouth, I guarantee you it's, like, an internal working system that basically he's able to turn the head, you know, normally, and then he's able to, like, work the mouth, like, with, a with like, a accuracy, like, an accuracy, like, so I, I forget what they called it, an accuracy socket system. Basically... It controls like certain portions of the mouth, like upper jaw, lower jaw, upper jaw, lower jaw, and he's able to like make it seem like, because you know, you can gesture out talking like this, and it sort of matches mm, most of the time. Yeah. And yeah, you just have to ventrilo. You have to be able to, you know, mimic it and keep it on point. I'm just saying there has to be like two people controlling him in order to do both the mouth and then the hands. Probably. At the same time. They're probably, well, that's the thing. They probably have done this act so many times that they know, like, if, uh, you know, they probably, the dude doing the voice, I guarantee you, hey, that's a separate person altogether. Could be. And the person working the hands, like, they could be, like, really good at, like, doing, like, working it with just, like, or, or they may have, a, like, a special thing where they use their, uh, they use their, like, pinky and thumb like this as, like, the primary controllers and stuff like that. I mean, I don't know. I, I'd love to know the secret, but the secret is part of the, the allure of the act. Mm. It's so well done that <clears throat> you forget you're looking at a fucking sock puppet. Yeah. It's fucking all that up, you know? I don't think we're, we're able to deal with the thousands of people we're connected to on a daily basis, and as a result, we neglect our immediate 150. And, I, and what he's saying about that, I think, is 100% true, because the most important people in our lives... <clears throat> I forget what it's called. They talked. They talked about it in uh, Doctor Stone, uh, mm. season three. Yeah, um, it was like how if they made their group too big, then it would start to fall apart. Exactly, because you know once you go past a certain sphere of influence and a sphere of like communication, it's impossible to maintain relationships with that many people. That it is, and in which you know it's, it, and that's and that's how tribalism comes into play, and you know it's it's a pain in the ass to deal with, but. Hey, it is what it is. Anyway, sorry, back to this. You know, that's why I never get invited to parties anymore. It's not because I ramble on about veganism and fisting old ladies. <laughs> it's because I'm not on Facebook and everybody just assumes you are. I am so behind on the births, deaths and marriages of my friends that I feel like the time traveler's wife every time I go to a party. I'm like, this is... Uh, Tim, he's our son, he's six now. Fucking didn't even know you were pregnant. <laughs> Accurate. Anyway, Accurate. And you know smartphones aren't that great? You know that, right? They're not. They're not that great. You don't need the internet in your pocket. You work at Coles, okay? You're not working for the president. You don't need it. You don't need that much information. And also, what was the point of developing opposable thumbs for you to take a photo of your head, post it on the internet, and then just stand by for validation? <laughs> <laughs> I ask myself that I ask my I ask the question all the time to people. It's just like, why do you take so many fucking selfies? It's like my little sisters. I love them to death, but I cannot tell you how many selfies they have on their fucking phones. I've, I've they've shown me they they were running through, and what? That's why the last time I updated mine was October third, twenty twenty two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> almost an entire like, almost year an ago, entire yeah. year since he has updated his like fit. And, and mine, Jesus Christ, uh, uh, yeah, my phone's here. When was the last time I edited mine? Let's see, hold on. Last time I edited my Facebook profile picture, it's the same black and white one that I have had forever. 2016. Yep. That's it. That's my Facebook profile picture. And I remember exactly where I was at when I took that. I was at Mellow Mushroom with my fucking mom. 
You see, you see, whenever you take all these selfies in place, look, it's cool if you're out there and you're exploring and everything, and you're, like, taking selfies of you, like, hanging out with your friends and stuff like that, making memories. That's fine. But if you're just monotonously sitting on a couch in the and you're finding ways to <clears throat> entertain yourself, and you just pick up your phone and start going... Or just, you know... I'm like, I'm like... I feel like there's at least a mild level of narcissism involved with something like that. Yeah, and and that's and it's very annoying and counterproductive for me because you know if you're in a place and you don't know anybody, okay, you know I've been there. I've been I've been the odd one out at parties. I've been the new guy that doesn't know anybody, and I've also been the guy who knows everybody, but at the same time. Like, everyone, everyone basically wants nothing to do with me because people are assholes sometimes. Um, yeah, and, and me, I've just, like, sat there and thought, and I've observed... Because hey, here's the thing. Instead of looking at your cell phone and just, like, taking a thousand selfies, instead, observe the world around you. Learn mannerisms and learn things about people and, like, see, it's just like, hmm... All right, that guy is drinking a lot. All right, that guy over there is... It, 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 and when you actually learn stuff about people and you see their behaviors and stuff like that, then you can learn how to how to actually interact with them and it not be completely awkward. And you basically just like you're sitting over there and you and you listen and you're just like, oh, they're discussing basketball. Hey, I like basketball. I know who Steph Curry is. I still think Michael Jordan's better than LeBron James. It's basically how I met my friends in high school because I was sitting behind them during a thing where we had a couple of classes that were together in a gym. Yeah. And I heard them talking about video games, and I was like, what, what game are you guys talking about, you know? And there you go. We were friends after that, pretty much. And, and, and that's the thing. You don't have to be friends with everybody, and not everybody has to like you. Just <clears throat> find your people. Find the people that you reverberate with and you can like have good conversations with but you know it you know don't limit yourself either i mean you know but if you come across people who are assholes to you then pff, say la vie fare thee well enjoy life anyway sorry back to this the fuck about your head they'll only validate it in order to gain permission to post a photo of their own head on the internet and stand by for validation <laughs> the people who give a fuck about your head will at some point see it in real life <laughs> fuck your head and the neck it rode in on <laughs> your vanity is sucking up my bandwidth <laughs> <laughs> this is what's going through my head as I'm on Gumtree looking for a bookshelf because oh, you know when you put something in, on the on the in the, like in the search in book tree in book tree what the fuck book tree what the fuck you put something in the search on Gumtree I'm having a stroke up here um, <laughs> yeah, when you put something in the search right and and like there's always a couple of things that come up in the list that are like the polar opposite of what you search for I'm like get out of my head Gumtree algorithms conspiracy no but seriously you type you type it's like bookshelf and it's like bookshelf 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 gramophone <laughs> bookshelf 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 combine harvester what the fuck that's <laughs> yeah, actually a pretty good price yeah <laughs> for later. This particular day, I found two bookshelves that worked for me in terms of cost and, more importantly, geographical convenience. Because I'd be fucked if I'm driving to Broadmeadows to pick up a bookshelf, right? So I type in bookshelf and I see the two things and I'm like, okay, one seller is Kathy, the other is Morgan. I send them both the same text message. Hello, I saw your bookshelf on Gumtree. Is it still available? Kathy texts back straight away saying, sorry, it went this morning. <laughs> That's cool, Kathy. I'm sorry I gave you an annoying voice in the retelling of this story. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, I, there's people, whenever they respond a certain way, I always imagine, like, I see her, like, I'll see the profile picture, and I'll just imagine in my head this is what they sound like. I, I, I do that subconsciously. I don't, I don't know why I don't do that, really. Um, the only time I do that is with characters and games. Like, if, oh. if it's a text-only thing, I'll imagine what the character might sound like. Fair For enough. For some reason, I've never done that with real people, though. Well, and I guess, it, I don't know, I guess it's where my mind is just, like, I see it, and I'm imagining, just, like, if I were to actually having me having this conversation with this person, 
I give them a voice in my head, and I'm just like, and it's like I see like a random dude online, you know, like a dude bro, and he'll just and uh, you know, like you see his profile picture, and it's him flexing, you know, just like his muscles, and he's trying to look cool. I can just imagine like if I were actually just like, it's like, hey man, uh, saw that you were selling your uh, your weight set. Uh, is the price like? Uh, the price in this is 75 uh, uh, can I come pick it up later today? And, uh, whenever they respond, it's just like, yeah. It's like, yeah, bro. If you want to come pick it up, my available hours are between 4 and 8. It's like, like... E then you get over there to pick it up, and it's like, hey, how y'all doing? Yeah, exactly. I'll get, <laughs> I'll get over there to him, and then all of a sudden... Instead of him being a dude, bro, instead he's a Jethro. Yeah. And I'm just like... I'm glad you came to took this over my hands today. I needed the room in man, my garage. I needed the room in my garage. Plus, my fucking wife's been on my ass about this shit. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's like, it's like, and I was like, hey, man, I'm happy to take it off you. 75, right? He's like, yep, 75. Hand him money. He's like, much appreciated, brother. You need help loading it up? Yeah, so that's how shit goes. Morgan's response came through a couple of minutes later and simply read... It was my wife's bookshelf. Uh -oh. How do you respond to that? How? Aside it's like, from the fact okay. that it doesn't answer my fucking question. <laughs> His use of past tense in that sentence unnerved me slightly. <laughs> it would be like, too. Is she dead? Oh, I was like, I fuck. Just... <laughs> <clears throat> oh, that'd be tragic. Let's find another bookshelf. And then I noticed he lived in the suburb next to me, so I replied, Is it still available? <laughs> <laughs> he responded with the letter Y. Just a Y? Is he asking me why I want to know if it's still available? Or is it a Y for yes? And he's so in the throes of grief that he can't manage the E and the S. I assume it's a Y for yes, so I respond, Cool, I'll take it. When's a good time to come and pick it up? No reply for 15 minutes. I'm like, oh, he's forgotten about me. Fuck it, I'll find another bookshelf. And then when his reply actually does come through, I realise he spent those 15 minutes crafting his response because it's a fucking thesis. <laughs> He must have felt so bad about only using a single consonant in his previous text that he just massively overcompensated with this one. <laughs> also, for some reason, felt that the use of punctuation, entirely unnecessary. Oh, God. <laughs> That's okay. It's a giant run-on. Oh, my God. Uh, I hate it's when funny. people do that. It breaks my brain. It does me, too, and I... Ugh. Obscenely long sentence, which reads... You must come and pick up now. I only have short time here at house and also it wide. So bring van or trailer and their stair. But I can help you carry downstairs. If you come park out front, walk up past ring bell and I will help you carry it to trailer or van. I only accept cash. And if you do not come now, I will sell it someone else. <laughs> Just find another bookshelf with this boy. Yeah. But now I am fascinated by Morgan and I simply must meet the man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh. I'm simply fascinated by Morgan and I must meet the man. Yes. Oh. I was gonna say I've never <laughs> met someone online and I've uh, just been like just been like, like like having a text conversation with them and just been like I must meet this person <laughs> I must meet at least like I, okay I've been on dates with people and everything and the thing is I've usually met these people in real life before I ever even considered bleh. You know, trying to have a like legit conversation with them, uh, you know, over the like, I actually talked to them in real life before I actually talked to them through Facebook or anything or any other way that I I'm I don't use dating apps. I'm I'm weird. Anyway. Well, I don't either because they just don't fucking work. <laughs> they only work for attractive people, and I'm not conventionally attractive. So. Mm. You can't really uh, attract anyone with your personality through a profile picture that people get to swipe left or right on, you know? Exactly, because, yeah, people are judgmental. Mm -hmm. I drive over to his house. Oh, before I left, I 
sent him a message saying, cool, I'll be there in 10 minutes. He replied, okay, but spelt it O-K-A-Y, which just fascinated me more that he'll use four <laughs> letters to spell a two-letter word, but only one letter to spell a three-letter word. Morgan is off the fucking chain! <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to picture what he's going to be like, you know. His pigeon English might suggest ethnicity of some sort, but I don't want to racially profile him. <laughs> maybe he's an old man who recently lost his wife and is not that very good at texting. Or maybe, and I'm really hoping this is the case, Morgan is just batshit crazy. So <laughs> yeah. Also, I think we... really hoping this is the case, Morgan is just Batshit crazy. So where was that? that it was when he said maybe right before that song. Maybe, and I'm really there. It was. Yeah. It's one. It's one person with a. It's one hand that's controlling both. Okay. So he's actually doing like a thing to like move them together. Yeah. It might be one person controlling him in that case, then. If that's the case, that is incredibly impressive. He might be doing the voice, too. If he's doing all three, explains this guy's how a... he did the uh, I'm having a stroke up here thing earlier and, like, synced it perfectly, you know? Yeah. And if he's doing all three, that is god tier yeah. in terms of puppetry and in terms of Which acting. Which also just explains why it works so well because everything can always be so perfectly on sync, you know? Yeah. Really hoping this is the case. Morgan is just batshit crazy. So, yes. I get to his house and I go up to the. I park out front, walk up the path, ring bell, and I. <laughs> I brace myself for the door to be opened by like an old man in a smoking jacket, wearing fishnet stockings and suspenders, <laughs> just puffing on an opium pipe, while a butler just creepily polishes a goldfish in the background. And then a tiny pug dog wearing a fez hat just trots up the hallway, sits on the mat, looks up at me and says, Welcome to our lovely room! <laughs> And Didn't the door happen, opens, did it? And I am thoroughly disappointed. Before me stands an average Caucasian male in his mid 30s, dressed casually, hipster chic, stubble, glasses with designer frames, expensive watch. I immediately think architect, but the house is too cheesy for that. It's like a double story doll's house with bay windows. But definitely a designer of some kind, maybe a graphic designer. He's too skinny for manual labour. He's too hip for the public sector. But this can't be Morgan. Because Morgan's text messages would suggest that he's not that tech. Technically savvy. And then the man standing in front of me says, Hello, my name's Morgan. And the plot thickens! Yeah! <laughs> he invites me in, shakes my hand, closes the door, and 20 minutes later, I will be witnessing Morgan perform some of the most aggressive acts of violence I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and I will be speeding away in my car, bleeding from the face. Excuse me? Here's how this shit went down. <laughs> I go into the house and I notice two things immediately. One, this is a house in the throes of renovation. Nothing too extreme, but there's like drop sheets on all the furniture, there's freshly painted walls, there's a bathtub wrapped in plastic in the hallway awaiting installation. Someone's doing some work on this house. The second thing I notice, on the way up the stairs to the second floor, on the first floor landing, is a wedding photograph featuring a very cleanly shaven Morgan with a very beautiful bride. Very much in love. The photograph is very much on the floor and the glass in the frame is very much smashed. She's not dead. Mm. She's left him, and the plot thickens a bit more for Morgan. <laughs> and as Morgan unceremoniously, like, kicks the photo frame to one side on the way up the stairs, I really wanted to pry into Morgan's life and ask heaps of inappropriate questions. <laughs> <laughs> See, subconsciously, there's shit that I'd like, I would like to ask my friends who are going through shit like that. But I know if I ask them, they're probably going to look at me and just be like, mind your fucking business, bro. <laughs> they're not going to be your friend anymore. Exactly! So they're going to be like, why the fuck would you ask something like that? You know? 
Be, be like, but be everybody like, kind of wants to know things about other people. Everybody's just weirdly curious about other people. Well, it's because I think we're naturally curious of just like relationships and stuff like that. Like me, I was curious about. Okay, I was curious about the breakup of my mom and my dad. Like what happened, and both of them revealed pieces and parts to me. Uh, from and it was weird hearing it from different perspectives. My dad told me first, and then my mom told me second, and I confirmed with both of them. Like, okay, so this is because <clears throat> there's stuff that is like it lines up perfectly, but then there are some details that just don't line up. It's like it's like all of a sudden it's like dad's viewpoint goes this way, mom's viewpoint goes that way, and all of a sudden just collision and everything just goes to shit and I basically asked my parents I was like look so this is how you think things happen and then here's how I knew that a big part of their divorce was misunderstanding you want to know what it was it was basically like my dad was accused of something and he denied it fervently my mom knew my dad did something and wouldn't listen to anything he had to say mm. and then my dad knew my mom was was behaving like this because of this but my mom but my mom actually had reasons for why she was acting the way she so basically one side one side like was accused of something and said it wasn't true. The other side said it was true and wouldn't be, like, moved any way about it. And it wouldn't allow any sort of conversation to be had. And, yeah, basically, because of that, neither one of them could come to any sort of agreement. And also my yeah, my grandparent, my specifically my grandmothers didn't help. I mean... I hate to say it, but I have one grandmother. She's a control freak. She's a control freak, and if she's not in control of everything, she's she's wigging out and she's making making it everybody else's problem. And I I hate to say it, but you know I love her. I love I love both my grandmothers, but they neither of them knew when to lay the fuck off and just let things be. They had to be in control, and they had to be the one to hammer the point home. And if they couldn't, then they were just going to blow up and, you know, fuck the whole situation up for everybody. Because some people are like that. And, yeah, basically, my parents', my parents marriage was dead on arrival when I was, like, 12 or 13. And for the next two years, it was absolute hell trying to get any semblance of of collaboration or cooperation between them. Impossible. But yeah, anyway. But he was clearly a broken man. He had this terrible air of sadness around him, so I didn't want to intrude. Luckily for me, though, I didn't have to because Morgan immediately began oversharing and told me the whole fucking story. Ah! Thank you, Morgan. I shall hang off your every word and then retell your tale to 200 strangers and record it for a fucking DVD. <laughs> <laughs> he is a graphic designer. Yes. And he's really good at it. He does, like, massive rebranding campaigns for large corporations. He gets flown all over the world doing this shit, right? Mm. About four years ago, a woman hired Morgan to rebrand her florist business, and he did such a great job, she married him. And he thought everything was just fine. Until about three months ago, Morgan had to do a presentation in Sydney, right? But he was on his way home from overseas and he got stuck in Dubai due to a flight cancellation. So rather than cancel the meeting, Morgan suggested to these businessmen in Sydney that they do a Skype chat because he's so technologically savvy despite his fucking baffling text message stuff. <laughs> so Morgan checks into a hotel, cracks open his laptop and starts Skyping with this room full of businessmen in Sydney who are all watching Morgan on a massive screen on their boardroom wall, right? And everything's going great. 
Morgan is totally nailing it until about halfway through, he realizes that a file he wants to show these dudes is on the desktop of his home computer back in his home office in Melbourne. And he decides to live share the desktop of his home computer on the Skype. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I can I see where this is go. going. Oh yeah, I know where this is going to. <clears throat> he knows how to do that. He can control his computer remotely from anywhere in the world. It's not particularly new technology, but Morgan makes it sound so impressive. So this room full of businessmen are all watching keenly like, oh, Margaret, bring in some biscuits. There's some newfangled shit going on in here. <laughs> <laughs> As Morgan clicks a few buttons and brings up the desktop of his home computer on the Skype chat. Now... What Morgan doesn't realize is that his wife has been using the photo booth app on that particular computer to take pictures of herself. To take naked pictures of herself. To take naked pictures of herself doing some pretty fucked up shit. <laughs> it's embarrassing to say the least. Just as Margaret came back in with the biscuits, I've got you the... <laughs> <laughs> Those of you who are familiar with the Photo Booth app will know that how it works is it accesses the built-in camera in your computer and with a click of a button, takes a photo of you when you're standing in front of the screen. And if you know that, you'll also know that if you leave that application open, the camera also stays open. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, that's actually a... Uh a hack that some people do to like extract information feed. That's an Apple computer, by the way. Photo Booth is an Apple computer, is like a Mac based program. But anyway, they basically open the app and then they leave it running in the background to like catch people like walking in front of their computers naked <clears throat> uh, or, you know, catching like doing blackmail and shit like that. That's actually a very common thing that happens on a lot of MacBooks because. Everyone's just like, oh, MacBooks are 100% safe. There's no viruses on Macs. But there are hackers. There's plenty of them. And they know and they know exactly what to do. And it's like, oh, it's such a sophisticated system. Like, no one would be able to... It, it's all proprietary. It's like, it doesn't matter. They know, they know their ways in. And honestly, the exploits are aplenty. So be careful with that shit. And that's why, for me... Well, I have webcams and stuff like that in my room. I, I have I, I have cameras down here. I have this one. I always turn this camera off. I always put a cover on my webcams on my laptops on top of like the ones that are on my screen. I always like I always like make sure my microphone is unplugged and everything. It's like, dude, you can never be too careful with this shit. Ever. That's just how like <clears throat> it's insanity. Just <clears throat> it's insane looking at what all is possible with like technology being wide open to the public. It's crazy. Sorry. Anyway, witnessing whatever may be happening in front of the computer in real time, <clears throat> such as your wife in your home office fucking your best mate. Oh, oh no! In front of all of the people. That he's working for. Yep. Morgan, no. <laughs> Morgan then goes on to tell me she's keeping the house, his former best mate is moving in, and while they're out for the day happily shopping for fittings, Morgan must suffer the indignity of moving his shit out and selling the stuff they don't want on Gumtree to this guy. Oh, oh. It's at this point of the story that Morgan starts crying. He breaks down, and I oh, do not man. blame the man. It's fucking horrible, and I just want to give him a big hug and say, everything's going to be all right, Morgan. Oh, God. So, I have... Uh, look, divorce divorce, and settlements in, this or in you know, most countries is bullshit. I don't think that... Men, like like the like the breadwinners in the relationship should get to keep all of the money you know like keep all of the assets but i think for most situations 50 50 is a bit much mm -hmm. especially if you've only been married say mm, i don't know one to four years and you don't have any kids and 
they and the person that is that you're in a relationship with doesn't really have any responsibilities outside of you know sweeping the floor every now and again, mopping the floor every now and again. But if they're working a second job and doing that, then that's a, that's a different story. I think there should be some recompense for you know like the divorce and everything. But it. <laughs> You know what the funniest, funniest one for me was? I kept reading about, like, all these, like, there was actually, it, they showed it was the same account. It was this woman basically seeing, like, uh, the big divorce settlement. It was like, oh, wow, did you hear that this woman's gonna get, like, half the money from uh, from her husband and this and that and blah, blah, blah. It's like, wow, that's set, like, it's like, it's like, man, that queen deserves all that she can get, man. She deserves all that money. And then, on the reverse of it, Adele had to give up, I think, $200 million to Simon Konecki, her former husband, in their divorce settlement. And then she was basically like, this is absolutely atrocious. I can't believe the, I can't believe the, the system allows this to happen. Women can't, like, women don't have any, as, like, women have no advantages when it comes to divorce. I'm like, yeah, okay. I'm sorry. I know that, it, I, I know that, you know, I'm turning this into, like, it, I'm not trying, I don't mean to when I, but there is such a thing as hypocrisy. And you just displayed it right there, hundred percent. You're an if, idiot. If someone cheats on somebody and gets caught, and the divorce is due to that, the person who cheated shouldn't get jack shit from the other person. I agree with that. I think there should be a clause in every single codicil when it comes, because basically it incentivizes cheating. That's mm -hmm. what, and here's the thing. I know a lot of people out there don't realize this, but do you know who gets a big hefty chunk of all those alimony checks that you have to pay out to the significant other that you're divorcing? The, the government! Yep. The U.S. government gets a good portion of that check, and that's what they want. They incentivize divorces. They incentivize cheating. They incentivize you to be a, a piece of shit. And, and that's the thing. I guarantee you, if there was a part of divorce, you know, divorce law that stated that if the person who initially cheated, and by cheated, I don't mean, oh, you know, this woman came by our table and my husband, my husband looked at her too long. That's not cheating. That's not cheating. That's him having a wandering eye and just like, the only thing that there's, like, is that just be like, be like, hey, the fuck was that about? Like that. That's one thing, but when you're getting when you're getting the dick laid to you by someone else, you're the one who's cheating. It's like, well, he looked at someone else. It's like, yeah, but you're literally having another person's like junk, like forced into you. Oh my god, never mind. I'm moving on. This is making when me all I'm too angry. The full weight of a bookshelf halfway down a set of stairs. Let's rewind that a little bit. And I just want to give him a big hug and say everything's going to be all right, Morgan. But I am holding the full weight of a bookshelf halfway down a set of stairs, and Morgan is the only thing stopping that bookshelf from caving my face in. I was like, Morgan! <laughs> 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 for about eight seconds and then just went bah, and let the bookshelf go i fell backwards it literally rolled over me and took out the light hanging above the staircase what the I'm now lying fuck? on my back getting showered in broken glass as the bookshelf turned end over end and just went funk right through a freshly painted wall at the bottom of the stairs I'm like oh, oh, oh. tiny cut on my forehead which is just piercing blood for some reason apart from that i'm fine <laughs> morgan however he's not fine morgan is the opposite of fine uh -oh. something happened when the bookshelf lodged itself in the wall and his sadness just went away in a second and he started pissing himself laughing <laughs> hysterical and he had the creepiest laugh i've ever heard in my life i'm standing on this is weird and he's going <laughs> like some sort of demonically possessed baritone kookaburra like, <laughs> <laughs> demonically repossessed baritone kookaburra <laughs> <laughs> i've never heard that before <laughs> Can I still have the bookshelf? He's like, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Be extracted from the wall. The bookshelf, incidentally, showing no sign of having just rolled down a staircase and smashed through a wall. Well, that's good we at least. To my car. We had to stop about six times because Morgan was like, hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Well, not only that, well, dude, it literally rolled over top of his head and Randy's bleeding. I mean, I mean, a little, like, okay, you got a bookshelf out of it, but, you know, you need to go get that handled before, you know, <laughs> blood loss. Yeah. Oh no. Good thing. But there was something about the bookshelf going through the wall that flipped a fucking switch in Morgan's head, and he is now hungry for more destruction. Oh no. So I started oh, he's kind of. Th he's probably thinking to himself like, "Yeah, they're taking this house. <coughs> like, you know, fuck them. I... Like, That's a good idea. Let's fuck this entire place up before they get back. Fuck them. <laughs> like, it's probably what he's thinking. I don't doubt it. Down to my trailer, Morgan just strolls over to like an upright mailbox on the front lawn and just starts trying to wrench it out of the ground. <laughs> <laughs> puppetry there is just so good <laughs> okay i have wrenched a mailbox out of the ground my dad told me to do it he's just like here's what you do son you basically grab the front of it here push pull push pull you see how it's starting to whittle a hole in the ground i'm like yeah he's like all right once the hole's wide enough then you can actually like lift it up out of the ground and i was like okay so i did that for a while and keep in mind, this wasn't concreted, you know, the, the, we didn't have concrete poured around it. So instead, it was literally like a giant, like, 4x4 four four stake in the ground that someone just hammered into the ground and then just uh, put a mailbox on top of it. So, so, fuck. So, anyway, I get it out of the ground, and my dad's just like, all right, son, toss it in the back. And I was like, all right. And just yeet, I yeeted a mailbox into the back of my dad's, like, pickup truck. And he was just like, he's like, all right, son, hop in. Let's go to the dump. And I remember, like, that mailbox. I was like, that mailbox has been here since I was born. I should feel some sort of, like, attachment to it or something, right? Nah. It's just a mailbox. Yeah, I know, I know. Really putting his back into it. Like, mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, you okay, buddy? He's like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> up the front garden, just beheading the daisies, fucking up the lavender. I'm like, oh, hey Morgan, maybe you want to stop and think about that. And he wheeled around and looked at me like Jack Nicholson chasing Shelley Duval up the stairs in The Shining, and said, why don't you mind your own fucking business? <laughs> All right. Yep, yep, cool man. Yep, yep. <laughs> Knots. If I tie something down, I take my time because I want it to stay there. But as Morgan nonchalantly strolled up the driveway, rolled up the garage door, and put the mailbox through the windscreen of an Audi, <laughs> I must admit, I kind of rushed my knot tying job. <laughs> That's why you get ratchet straps, brother. Ratchet straps are much more effective and also. And also, you know, they're they aren't gonna come undone, or you, know, you don't have to worry about knots. Just ch 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 ch. All right, we're good. <laughs> I got in the car. I'm about to drive off. I'm like looking at the house, going, oh, oh, I'm sure it'll be fine. And then an armchair smashed out of an upstairs window and just went going, 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 going down the front lawn. I was like. <sighs> <laughs> What's my duty of care in this situation? I didn't want to call the cops on him. I didn't want him to trash the house. I'm like, God, fuck, I'm going to have to talk to Morgan. So I got out. I walked up the driveway, shitting myself. You know when someone does something really violent and you're just like, God, fuck, we're not supposed to do shit like that. <laughs> yucky, yep. just yucky feeling in my tum-tum. And I'm standing there. 
<laughs> Yucky feeling in my tum tum. I have that all the time. Oh. Standing there in the garage, and there's like an adjoining door in the garage that leads into the house. I can see in through that, through the door into the house, up the staircase. It's like a wooden staircase, and I'm standing in the garage just going, <laughs> Morgan! 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 Like I was calling a cat for its dinner. Like, Morgan! Muggy, 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 muggy! Morgan! And then I notice a small trickle of water start to come from the top step. And then a little bit more water, and then, so, and then quite a lot of water. Just pissing down the stairs like a shitty water feature. You probably like, clogged up the sink right. or something and, and turned it on. on the top step holding a hammer like this. Bah! I was like, whoa! He's like, bah! Bah! He's running at me, wielding the hammer, going, bah! I'm like, oh, no, man, I just wanted to buy your bookshelf. He's like, bah! Bah! Run straight past me. I'm like, where are you going? He's like, bah! made a beeline for my car. I'm like, no, man, stop. He's like, stop, just stop. He spins around and goes, I just checked my phone. She texted me 15 minutes ago saying she'll be here in 15 minutes. We gotta go and gets into my car. No. <laughs> no. I love the fact I'm that we not both your escape driver in this situation. I love the what fact the that we fuck? both in unison were like, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's I called like, it. Just drive. I was like, ah! I took off so quick, rounded the corner at the end. We're the wet street. bandits. It's our calling card. Jesus Christ! Sick. You know that? Really sick. <laughs> and the bookshelf just went. Oh. God. Drive. I was like, ah! I took off so quick, rounded the corner at the end of his street, and the bookshelf just went. Boosh! Oh, and exploded against the guardrail. No! Shower of badly tied knots and broken dreams. Shit. So me and Morgan just fucking left it there. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Just, just rendered this whole whole situation pointless. Yeah. If you'd have just left, dude. You'd have just left when you thought about it. Just like, like instead of being like, I'm sure he'll be fine. And then just drove off. That'd have been in the end of it. Like, literally with me, like, if I was in that situation and I got the bookshelf loaded up and dude just started trashing the place, I'd just be like, all right. And I'd be like, none of my business. And I would leave. Exactly. It's just like, got my bookshelf. I'm done. I'm gone. <laughs> a breadcrumb for his ex-wife to find on the way home to her destroyed gingerbread house. <laughs> Morgan at a train station? I have never seen him again. <laughs> and that, my friends, is why I no longer on Gumtree. Thank you very much. Damn. Okay. So good. Ah, uh, uh, fuck. <laughs> you know my favorite bit of that story? I just made it up. <laughs> God so damn true. it. Okay. Okay. He got me. Oh. It's very unsatisfying, isn't it? <laughs> but I saw him in my head. But I saw him in my head. I saw Morgan in my head. We can feel so robbed when someone tells us a story we just heard isn't true and yet so satisfied at the end of a fictional novel. You know the other great thing about that story? First draft. Fuck you, Hemingway! Oh, God. <laughs> First draft. Oh, God. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, so... <laughs> Damn, that's, yeah, so that was Randy Feltface buying a bookshelf off Gumtree. Christ almighty. Just, what do you say to that, dude? What do you, like, okay, it's I know the story's not... It's an entertaining story. Yeah, it's a very entertaining story, not real, but still, 
Holy shit. Very entertaining. Very, very, very entertaining. So, you know, he was a good storyteller or whatever he had you like convinced the entire thing actually happened up until he said it didn't. You know? I was convinced. <laughs> I was convinced 100%. God. I was like, none of this sounds entirely outside of the realm of like possibility, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there's another one that I can show you. It's a quick one. Uh, it's him going over the life of Ernest Hemingway. And it is, it's something. Uh, you'll You'll enjoy that one. So, anywho, that was, a uh, Randy buys a bookshelf off Gumtree. So, if you enjoyed more from Randy Feltface, I'm actually going to connect Randy Feltface's original, you know, official YouTube channel to this. So, I know this isn't, this isn't associated with Randy Feltface. So, I'm going to connect Randy Feltface's actual, like, channel to, to this. So, yeah, all well and good. But, yeah, till next time, everybody, signing off, I'm Nate. I am Nick. Y'all be good people. Take care. Peace.